Seth Dobrin. I'm from IBM. I'm the Global Chief AI Officer. So my role entails a few things. So one is helping to define the AI half of IBM's hybrid cloud and AI strategy, and then activating the company towards that. It's also uh, doing things like how do we implement the upcoming EU AI Act once our, our, our privacy lawyers and then those folks determine what that looks like. Uh, and then spending time with customers around the world, you know, global Fortune 1000 company, helping them figure out how to really get value from AI. So painting, well, or artwork in general, visual, visual artwork in general, I guess, is a better way for me to think about it. I think it depends on what you mean for AI to generate art. So I have a friend named Refik Anadol, who's a Turkish artist, who actually uses AI to generate art, but it's, it's augmenting him, so he's actually driving it. So for instance, uh, about a year ago, he did a commission, a piece with the Metropolitan Museum of Art, in Modern Art in New York, where he created artwork using AI that represented groups of artists that were in the, in the MoMA, and art that if they were one person, they would have made. Uh, and so, to some extent, it exists today for, for visual art. And then things like Dolly and Dolly 2 that you mentioned are, are getting there, but I don't know that it's indistinguishable yet. Um, I think that's a, a little further out. Um, AI, so if you remember a few years ago, uh, while it didn't generate a full movie, uh, IBM actually created the trailers using Watson. Uh, and so it extracted the content and context from uh, from the movie, it looked at other trailers, uh, and then it created very engaging trailers for that movie. So it wasn't a full-length movie, but it was pieces of a movie, uh, and it kind of spliced them out. I, I think I think we're a long way off. A AI really needs to truly learn emotion and really be able to simulate it better than it can today. So I'd say five, ten years off, but it may never, tr likely won't truly replace humans for much longer than that. So today, lots of financial news, like all the news, like Reuters and a lot of those agencies, if you have a stock thing you subscribe to, there's bits that are automatically generated. Are they as engaging as something that, that you would do or something a, a reporter from the Financial Times would do? Probably not, or no. Um, but with the advent of GPT-3 and large parameter language models, which are complex models that are trying on the internet, there are tools out there where you can go and it will, you, type topics and it'll generate a story for you to start with today. Well, so I think we need to get good at things like uh, like artwork. Uh, I, I actually, I would argue that novels are harder than artwork, but easier than movies and harder than news articles. Um, and so, you know, like I mentioned with movies, you need to start figuring out how do you engage and how does AI actually learn to engage in motion better than it can today, produce empathy things like that, because that's really what grabs your attention, at least for me, in, in a story. I think certainly today, using the output of some companies that generated work from GPT-3 or, or Lambda or other things, you get a start at one. So you can certainly put topics in and get a you know, 100, 200 page synopsis uh, generated for you. So a full novel, five years. Oh boy, that's a good one. I think um, I think I saw something where you can sort of do that today. Uh, I don't know how very good it is, how how good it was, uh, but I'm gonna imagine that's uh, a few years out. But it, I also do think it's important to to recognize that AI, at least for the foreseeable future, is probably going to be doing these things to augment humans and give artists and journalists and composers and producer or directors and writers a start at these things, a really solid start. I don't think I see it like fully being able to replace those and crank out movies or stories or novels, you know, every at, at the pace of a, of a computer.